okay so friends uh, sorry for the inconvenience actually we lost around 20 minutes due to some technical issues so today we have a session on packaging and we have got our dr ramya s who is presently working as senior scientist in central institute of fisheries technology she is working in the division of fish processing area of research is uh, fish processing and uh, packaging technology so she has worked in many of the areas like high value products and process and protocols for innovative products development in aquatic resources and uh, she mean she has uh, received many awards and recognitions including asian fisheries society young scientist award and other many oral and post presentation awards so without taking much time i all right you welcome our speaker dr ramya on behalf of uh, cpcra and on behalf of all the participants so madam uh, now we can go to your session yes. okay thank you and uh, i'm really very sorry uh, for the technical problem from our side um, and uh, today i'll be talking on um, innovative packaging techniques with smart functions uh, but i'll be talking only the uh, most like most important uh, things only i'll not go much uh, deeper into it so we all know that uh, packaging plays a very important in protecting the food which is or the product which is inside so it is not a new thing it has been with humans for thousands of years in one form or the other so when there was a requirement of packaging nature provided the first materials in the form of leaves or uh, logs or uh, animal skin etc so it's not a new thing only the form has been changed so when you come to the uh, purpose of packaging the basic uh, purposes of packaging are first it has to contain the product it has to carry the product then it should enhance the presentation of the product which is inside it should enhance the convenience it should uh, improve the like ease of handling and also uh, it should protect the products during distribution and processing and also it provides the storage history the information about the product which is inside so in short we can say that packaging can act as a silent salesman the salesman uh, an unappointed salesman for you when you display your product in a supermarket or a, a shopping mall so it will uh, perform the function of a salesman so coming to the requirements for food packaging so when you use uh, packaging materials for a uh, food when the purpose of packing food the first and most important requirement is its safety means the packaging material should be food grade so for that you have to conduct migration study then also it should be taste and smell neutral it should be a good barrier to light oxygen water vapor carbon dioxide aroma etc and also the temperature at which you are filling your product is very important and also at what temperature you are storing the product and uh, also the temperature during distribution so the temperature is very important so the temperature at which the packaging material is exposed is very important so you have to choose your packaging material according to your application then the machinability and sealing property of the packaging material is also very important then whether it is reusable or recyclable that is very important and finally or the most importantly price so price is also very is a very important requirement and then there are some basic materials for food packaging or uh, in general for other applications also uh, earthen pots are there then paper paper uh, paper is a flexible packaging material so it's uh, one of the oldest flexible packaging material and it is an extensively used packaging material so there are different types of papers uh, then paper boards are there then glass is there metal tin aluminum tin free steel cans are there then other flexible films like a plastic film aluminum foil metalized films retortable pouches these are some of the common materials for packaging and packaging materials have been classified into different groups uh, based on uh, different uh, like the considerations may be different so one classification is uh, based on its flexibility so the packaging materials have been classified into flexible semi flexible or semi rigid and rigid materials so plastic uh, paper and textile materials are very flexible then uh, there are some semi rigid materials like paper board then aluminum containers etc then wood glass metals and hard plastics comes under the category of rigid packaging materials so another classification is uh, 
primary, secondary and tertiary packaging. So these are different levels of packaging. Primary packaging means the packaging material which first envelops the product or the uh, material which is in direct contact with the food. That is known as primary packaging. So mostly only uh, the primary packaging comes in contact with the food. Then uh, there is a secondary packaging. So outside the primary packaging, there is a secondary packaging that will group the primary packages together. Then there is a tertiary packaging. So tertiary packaging will group the secondary packages together. And uh, these are generally used for bulk handling and uh, shipping. So traditionally, what we believe is uh, the packaging functions are a protection, presentation and unitization. So it has to protect the product. It should improve the appearance or uh, it should enhance the presentation and also it should unitize the products. But uh, now the innovative packaging functions are a little different. So in addition to protection, preservation is also a packaging function now and also traceability. So in the modern uh, food packaging and distribution systems, traceability is also a packaging function and then indication. So the packaging should be able to preserve the product, not only protect. Protection means only the physical protection. The packaging material will act like a physical wall. So it will uh, pr protect your product from uh, the external stresses, physical stresses. Uh, but in innovative packaging systems, uh, the uh, most important function is preservation. It should preserve the food products and traceability and indication. It should indicate the quality or the condition of the product which is inside the material. So there are different um, advanced packaging techniques. So among them, the most important technique is uh, reduced toxin packaging techniques. So there are different reduced toxin packaging technologies. So in reduced toxin packaging means nothing but we are removing, displacing or replacing or controlling the oxygen content which is inside a packet or in the head, head space of a packet below the 21% normal oxygen concentrations. So the normal oxygen concentration is 21%. So when you make a change in that, if you remove the oxygen or if you replace oxygen with some other gas or if you control the oxygen content. So in, if you do any of these, you can call it as reduced oxygen packaging. So there are different techniques like vacuum packaging, modified atmosphere packaging, controlled atmosphere packaging, cook chill and sous vide packaging. So how oxygen comes into the package? Uh, so we know that uh, there will be some uh, air enclosed in the food and packet. Mm, due to the permeability, the poor permeability of the packaging material also, some oxygen or air may come inside. There could be some small leaks because of the faulty sealing. And because of inadequate evacuation also, oxygen may come inside. So oxygen is not good for your food because oxygen is one of the major limiting factors uh, which can affect the shelf life of your food. So when the food product comes into contact with oxygen, there will be rancidity, oxidation. So when there is a rancidity because of oxidation, there will be off flavor development, off order development. There could be some loss of uh, nutrients like uh, the vitamin E, beta carotene, ascorbic acid, etc. could get oxidized. And there, there could be also color changes like the pigments, uh, they, they may get uh, discolorated. Especially in meat and all, there will be color changes. Then uh, when there is oxygen, there will be growth of aerobic microorganisms. So the aerobic uh, spoilage will happen when there is air or oxygen. So coming to the um, reduced oxygen packaging techniques. So one of the most commonly used reduced oxygen packaging technique is uh, vacuum packaging. So in vacuum packaging, uh, oxygen or uh, air is removed from the packet and then the packet is hermetically sealed so that vacuum is maintained inside the packet. So when we uh, do vacuum packaging, when we remove oxygen, so we, we are removing oxygen, more than 99% of the oxygen can be removed. So for that, you need a vacuum packaging machine and also a very good quality packaging material. So the product is packed inside a flexible packaging film with very good oxygen barrier property and it should be sealable also. So if the oxygen barrier property or the oxygen permeability of the packaging material is not very good, so oxygen may go inside. So in vacuum packaging, we should use a uh, packaging film or a material with very good oxygen permeability, superior oxygen transmission rate. So another uh, technique is vacuum skin packaging. So in vacuum packaging, when you do vacuum packaging, uh, there could be a wrinkled appearance. So uh, it may affect the appearance of the product. Some people may not prefer that wrinkled appearance. Uh, when you do vacuum packaging, uh, there may be a wrinkled appearance. So 
if you don't like that so we have vacuum skin packaging in vacuum sk skin packaging so the product is placed on a piece of paper board or a tray and there could be some depression also so in that depression you can keep your product and with a thin sheet of plastic which is made up of uh, plastic material so uh, that can be placed over and uh, then you can seal it so the appearance of your product can be improved with vacuum skin packaging so the demerit of this technique is this is not a very viable technology for products with a crisp and delicate nature and also with the sharp edges for example uh, dried shrimp or uh, sorry dried fish so it has got spine so if the product has got a uh, sharp edges you can't use it for vacuum packing and also when you do vacuum packing or if you adopt any of the reduced toxin packaging techniques you have to strictly maintain the temperature below 3.3 degrees celsius because when you do vacuum packaging or reduced toxin packaging you are removing the oxygen so you are creating an anaerobic condition inside the packet so this will help the growth of pathogens like clostridium botulinum and listeria monocytogenes so to prevent their growth you have to maintain the temperature below 3.3 degrees celsius uh, the next technique is modified atmosphere packaging uh, technique so in modified atmospheric packaging the atmosphere of the packed food is modified so its composition is different from air so in vacuum packaging you are removing the oxygen or air from the food packet in map or modified atmosphere packaging uh, you are modifying the atmosphere of the uh, packet means which is the atmosphere which is inside so you may be putting a mixture of gases inside so if it is a fatty food so there are some commonly used gases like carbon dioxide oxygen and nitrogen so if it is a fatty food or a fatty fish so you can avoid using oxygen so in the case of fatty fishes we normally use 60% uh, carbon dioxide and 40% nitrogen we don't use any oxygen but if it is a uh, semi fatty or a non fatty food uh, you can use uh, some amount of oxygen also so the major gas is carbon dioxide so in vacuum packing you are removing the oxygen or air from the packet but in modified atmospheric packaging you are putting a mixture of gases inside so uh, the major gas is carbon dioxide because it is bacteriostatic it can suppress the microbial growth and nitrogen uh, it is an inert gas it is just a filler gas it is it is inert so it won't react with food especially uh, you might have seen in purpure lays and such uh, products with a very crispy product we use nitrogen as a filler gas so it will give a cushioning effect like a pillow like effect so it can prevent the breakage of uh, food products but in modified atmospheric packaging uh, you are uh, modifying the atmosphere but the atmosphere may change over a period of time because of the permeability of the packaging material or due to the respiration of the food so here also the permeability of the packaging material is very important because you are trying to control the percentage of oxygen which is inside and you are replacing oxygen with another gases so a very minimum gas oxygen should come inside so the permeability oxygen permeability of the packaging material is very important in modified atmosphere packaging also so the next technique is sous vide or a sous vide processing it is pronounced as sous vide sous vide is a french term uh the meaning of sous vide is under vacuum so this is under vacuum processing or under vacuum cooking so in that we are packing uh, the food products uh, in a pouch and then we are vacuum packing it so these are heat stable pouches uh, which are uh, under packed under vacuum then we are heating it or cooking the food under control conditions of temperature and time and followed by rapid chilling so normally we cook it for a very long time at a low temperature at a very, uh, for a very long time like from 8 hours to it, it may go up to 48 hours so very slow cooking then uh, you are immediately chilling it so normally in a controlled water bath uh, the vacuum packed products are cooked so it can improve the quality and shelf life of the food products compared to air packing or vacuum packing uh, coming to active packaging so active packaging is different from uh, other uh, reduced oxygen packaging or other kind of uh, uh, traditional packaging systems so in the um, traditionally what we believe is uh, a packaging system or a package should be inert means it should be passive it should not interact with the food or its surrounding environment but unlike those conventional packages an active packaging system is interactive so active packaging means it is interactive for interacting with the food or its surrounding environment we are incorporating certain additives into the packaging systems 
so we will be incorporating certain additives for maintaining or extending the product quality and shelf life so uh, there are two types of active packaging systems uh, there are scavenging systems and releasing systems so scavenging means they will be absorbing or scavenging something from the food or its surrounding environment something which is not good for food will be scavenged in releasing system something which is good for the uh, food product will be released into the food packet so the in scavenging system there may be oxygen scavengers uh, water vapor scavengers ethylene scavengers aldehyde scavengers etc releasing system carbon dioxide is good for your food so carbon dioxide can be released into the uh, food then antimicrobials and the oxidants etc can also be released into the food so uh, there are many active packaging systems but when you consider um, all the applications all the uh, different packaging application moisture absorbers are the best selling active packaging technology when you consider all the applications because you might have seen moisture absorbers in the form of silica gels in when you purchase a trolley bag or a handbag or something but uh, when you consider only strictly uh, food application oxygen scavengers are commercially more valuable so moisture absorbers are widely used but when you consider only food application oxygen scavengers are the most uh, commercially valuable active packaging technique so in the like in uh, vacuum packaging in vacuum packaging using a vacuum packaging machine you are removing air or oxygen from the head space of the food in the case of oxygen scavenger also we are creating a micro reduced oxygen atmosphere using an oxygen scavenger you don't need a machine or something it can also reduce the oxygen level inside the a packet to less than 0.01% which is impossible with any other packaging system you can't remove the oxygen level to less than 0.01% with any other systems that to uh, in a very less time uh, it may take maximum 24 hours so there are different mechanisms of action like oxidation of iron and iron salt oxidation of photosensitive dyes oxidation of ascorbic acid oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids oxidation of rice extract oxidation of immobilized yeast on a solid substrate but the typical oxygen scavenging system is based on the oxidation of iron powder and the principle is iron dress formation and will uh, so you can see the iron powder which is inside the oxygen absorbers so the oxygen absorbers are in different forms it could it can be in the form of a sachet or a film label or a bottle cork suppose a beer bottle so you can uh, use oxygen scavenger in the form of cork so the cork is an oxygen scavenger it can absorb the oxygen which is inside the bottle so this comes in uh, different forms so it's very convenient so you have to put a sachet you don't need any machine so you can buy the oxygen scavenger sachet and you can put inside your food packet it will absorb the oxygen which is inside so it was not very popular in our market in india market but uh, nowadays uh, some companies even haldirams and all they have started using oxygen scavengers for their food products so coming to the applications uh, it has got um, wide applications in the case of food like in our lab we have used it for extending the shelf life of different fishes like uh, rainbow trout it is a cold water fish when we packed the uh, rainbow trout with oxygen absorber it was in good condition up to 53 days compared to only 49 days in vacuum packing and only 34 days in air packing so there was a clear shelf life extension when we used oxygen absorber and another fish cobia that was also uh, packed with oxygen absorber and it was uh, in good condition up to 30 days compared to only 18 days in air packs uh the next technique is carbon dioxide emitter so in oxygen scavenger you are uh, the oxygen scavenger will scavenge the oxygen in carbon dioxide emitter carbon dioxide will be released or emitted into the food product carbon dioxide is a bacteriostatic gas it can control microbial growth and uh, some of the carbon dioxide emitters are uh, like it is moisture activated so when the juice or when the moisture from the food drips onto the carbon dioxide emitter sachet the carbon dioxide will be emitted there are some commercial carbon dioxide emitters like co2 fresh packs and the super fresh and oxygen scavenger there are many brands uh, actually it was um, first the oxygen scavenger was marketed by mitsubishi chemical company in japan uh, their oxygen scavengers are based on uh, iron oxidation and the most popular brand is ageless so carbon dioxide emitters uh, so they contain active ingredients like citric acid and sodium bicarbonate so they are moisture activated carbon dioxide generating materials 
so they are located between layers of absorbent materials and they are bound to fibers of the material so carbon dioxide fresh fat so they can modify the atmosphere around the product they'll push out the oxygen and it can alter the ph so when there is an alteration in the ph it can inhibit bacterial growth and the food will stay fresh for longer time and then there are some dual action combined carbon dioxide generators and oxygen scavengers so uh, like they these are a dual purpose active packaging systems so they'll remove oxygen at the same time they will uh, release some carbon dioxide into the food products so uh, they, they will uh, absorb oxygen and uh, they will release an equal volume of carbon dioxide uh, they work on uh, uh, either ferrous carbonate or a mixture of ascorbic acid and sodium bicarbonate so there are some commercial examples like ageless uh, and fresh packs uh, coming to moisture absorbers so they are moisture control agents or humidity absorbers they can control the moisture or they can lower the water activity of the product and then control microbial growth and the typical systems are the sachets containing silica gels they can enhance the product appearance and freshness there are different materials which can be used as moisture control agents like uh, polyacrylates Uh, which are used as sheets and then there are polypropylene glycol films silica gel sachets and clay sachets these are some of the commonly used materials as moisture control agents like oxygen absorbers moisture absorbers are also available as sachet film tray and pad uh, especially in the case of fish uh, in fish during storage um, or uh, like in the market when you see fish you can see that there will be some tow drip some juice or some liquid will ooze out from the fish and it will be uh, like red in color mixed with the blood and it will be red in color so it gives a very bad appearance so if you use a moisture absorber sachet or a moisture absorber pad below the uh, food product or fish so it can enhance the appearance of the food product so there are some moisture absorbing pa packages like pp or pet trays for fish packaging then there are drip absorbent sheets then uh, there are wrapping materials like the desiccant agent between two layers of a plastic material which will be highly permeable to water vapor so there are different type of moisture absorbing packages these are some of the commercial examples like a pichit from japan so this is a layer of uh, propylene glycol which is sandwiched between two layers of polyvinyl alcohol then uh, pp or P, uh, pet trays pet trays for fish by link pack packaging then there are some drip absorbent sheets or pads uh, by cryovac and uh, thermarai peel soap drop and some uh, these are some of the examples uh, next is anti microbial packaging so this is a promising version of active packaging in anti microbial packaging an anti microbial substance will be added into the packaging material for releasing on to the food uh, food surface so when an anti microbial substance is incorporated into the packaging material and when it is released on to the food surface it can extend the lag phase and reduce the growth phase of microorganism so then um, uh, like as a result of that the shelf life and the quality of the food will be maintained and shelf life will be enhanced so there are different anti microbial agents you can use a natural or a synthetic anti microbial agent so the anti microbial agents can be coated incorporated immobilized or surface modified onto packaging materials so one commercial anti microbial film is microguard from usa so these are some of the anti microbial films uh, microban has also got some anti microbial uh, system then uh, there are some anti packaging systems uh, from kytosan this is this is developed in our lab so we have uh, developed packaging materials from uh, kytosan so kytosan is a molecule which is extracted from the exoskeleton or the shell of uh, um, crustaceans like uh, shrimps and crabs so then uh, we have developed packaging materials from kytosan then now uh, this packaging material was incorporated with essential oils so essential oils are a uh, volatile aromatic oils so they are produced uh, by plants so from plant parts you can um, extract essential oils they are volatile oils so they will get uh, evaporated so they are volatile so when you uh, incorporate essential oils into the kytosan film they will be slowly uh, they will be getting released onto the food products and uh, then uh, there are ethylene scavengers they are all, they are mainly used for extending shelf life for climacteric fruits and vegetables so fruits like apple kiwi banana then uh, some vegetables like cucumber tomato so ethylene as all of us know it is a natural plant growth regulator so it's a hormone which can accelerate the ripening and softening 
So during storage, if there is a high concentration of ethylene, uh, this will lead to accelerating the respiration rate and subsequent senescence in food product. So if you can remove ethylene, you can um, delay the ripening and softening of fruits and vegetables. So if you remove ethylene, um, it will help to increase the shelf life of the food products. So in the right side, there is a picture of a banana. So there are two bunches, two groups of banana. Uh, the first picture was taken on first day and uh, the second picture was taken after one week, after seven days. So the first group or the first bunch of bananas were packed with ethylene scavenger and the second group was without ethylene scavenger. So after one week, you can see that the first batch remained fresh, like uh, almost fresh like uh, the first day. But the second group, they became ripened. So you can see black spots on that. So uh, what happened is the ethylene scavenger removed the ethylene and it delayed ripening of banana. So this uh, this can be uh, used for a tomato, apple, etc. Um, as ethylene scavenger, you can use potassium permanganate, zeolite, active carbon, pumice, etc. So these materials can remove ethylene and this can be incorporated into the packaging material for scavenging ethylene. Uh, next is intelligent packaging. So active packaging is different from indeline packaging. In active packaging, you are scavenging or uh, release, you are scavenging something which is not good for the food from the packet or you are releasing something into the food. So the packaging material, the packaging film itself can act as an active packaging system or you can incorporate some sachet or uh, some other cork or something you can uh, incorporate into the packaging system as an active packaging component. Uh, in Indian packaging, it is different from active packaging. In Indian packaging, they are monitoring, like they, they monitor the condition of the packaged food. They'll monitor the quality of the condition of the packaged food and they'll give information regarding the quality of the packaged food to the customer, especially during transportation and storage. So these, these are packaging which can sense and sense the quality of the uh, food product the quality of the product which is inside the packaging material and then they can give information about the quality or condition of the food to the customer. So there are different lean packaging systems uh, like sensors, indicators and radio frequency identification tags. Sensors, uh, these are devices which can be used to detect, locate or quantify energy or matter. And then they give signal for the detection or measurement of a physical or chemical property to which the device responds. So most of the sensors, they contain two basic functional units, a receptor and a transducer. So there are many sensors like gas sensors, chemical sensors and biosensors. So among gas sensors, oxygen sensors and carbon dioxide sensors are very important. So suppose uh, you have used uh, oxygen scavenger sachet. So oxygen scavenger sachet is supposed to scavenge all the oxygen which is inside the packet. But uh, you don't know whether the oxygen scavenger sachet has already scavenged all the oxygen which is inside, whether it is performing correctly. So to check its performance, you can use an oxygen sensor. So the oxygen sensor will give you uh, the like the concentration or the amount of oxygen which is inside. Then there are carbon dioxide sensors. Then there are biosensors. So they have extreme specificity and reliability. They have a bioreceptor. And then a transducer. So the transducer can convert the biological signals to a quantifiable electrical response. So the bioreceptors could be organic materials like enzymes, antigens, microbes, hormones, and nucleic acids. There are some commercial examples like a toxin guard. This is developed by Toxin Alert from Canada. So in this, there are antibodies in a polyethylene-based plastic packaging. They can detect Salmonella, Campylobacter, E. coli, and Listeria. So they can detect bacterial pathogens. Another example is the food sentinel system. So this is a biosensor system. They can continuously detect the contamination through immunological reactions occurring in the part of a barcode. Uh, then there are indicators. So indicators are different from sensors. Sensors mostly they will give uh, like mostly a quantitative information, but indicators they will uh, generally they will indicate the presence or absence of a substance or the degree of reaction between two or more substances by means of a characteristic change especially in color so they don't have a receptor or transducer components they'll communicate the information through direct visual change there are different indicators like integrity indicators freshness indicators time temperature indicators 
so integrity or leak indicators so uh, they can uh, indicate uh, if there is a leak of oxygen or uh, if there is an integrity uh, issue you, uh, the indicator can indicate they can inform the customer so there are visual oxygen indicators they are mainly redox dyes so they can confirm the proper functioning of uh, an active packaging system like oxygen absorber so like you can see in the picture when the uh, packet the food packet is oxygen free when the oxygen concentration is 0.1 percentage or less the color of the indicator which is out, which is outside the food packet will be pink in color so when you look at the packet you can you you have to see the indicator if the color of the indicator is pink that means the the packet is oxygen free the oxygen content is 0.1 percent or less inside the packet but if it is blue there is oxygen uh, like oxygen is present inside the oxygen concentration is 0.5 percentage or more so there are many uh, commercial uh, leak indicators like ageless eye vitalone and samso checkers so you don't have to like you don't need a machine or something so there are indicators so look at the indicator the color of the indicator which is uh, displayed outside the food packet so if like you wanted to buy a uh, food packet without oxygen and if you see the color of the indicator is blue you don't have to buy it so then there are freshness indicators so a freshness indicator will give you an idea about the freshness of the freshness or the quality of the food product so they will give a uh, direct product quality information by changing the color so they will uh, detect the microbial growth or some chemical changes which is happening inside the food product they will uh, like they will detect it and they will respond to that change when there is a microbial growth there will be color change if there is a chemical change there will be color so when there is microbial growth naturally the food is spoiled the freshness has been lost so that will be communicated to the customer so in uh, every food there are potential indicator metabolites like uh, organic acids microbial metabolites ethanol biogenic amine hydrogen sulfide so when the concentration of these indicator metabolites increases that will be captured that will be detected by the indicator and the indicator will change its color with uh, the change in these uh, metabolites so when there is an increase in the concentration of these metabolites the color of the indicator will change so by looking at the color the consumer can decide the consumer can judge the quality of the product by himself so see look at the uh, look at the picture so uh, it's a pear so the texture of uh, fruits like pear the texture is very important so some people prefer only a uh, very fresh uh, pear with a very crispy texture so when the texture is crisp the indicator color will be red when it is firm means it's okay uh, the quality is okay okay then uh, like the color will be changing to orange and when it becomes juicy the color will turn into yellow so when you see the color uh, if you see the color is yellow you don't have to buy it if you are uh, buy planning to buy a very crisp pear so fresh tag is a commercial example they are color change indicator labels they will react uh, to volatile amines produced during storage of fish and other seafood so uh, like uh, in fish volatile amines are very important so during spoilage a volatile bases will be generated so when there is formation of volatile bases so the volatile bases will form and uh, when there is increase in the concentration of volatile bases like a trimethyl amine and ammonia the ph will change so the change in the ph can be detected using indicators so uh, in cft nar institute we have developed some indicators based on both a natural and uh, synthetic uh, ph uh, sensitive dyes so these are some of the dyes like bromocruso purple bromocruso green and bromo thymol blue so they are ph sensitive when there is a change in the ph they'll change their color so we have used these indicator dyes for uh, quality monitoring of fishes like horse mackerel it's a fish so uh, like on zero today you can see that the ph of the fish was 5.91 and the color of the different indicators the uh, bromocrisol green it was blue color bromothymol blue it was uh, yellow of white yellow then um, bromocrisol purple it was uh, yellow color and on 11th day on 8th day the ph changed to 6.65 and on 11th day it was 6.76 so when there is a change in the ph you can see that the bromocrisol purple that was that functioned as an excellent indicator compared to bromocrisol green and bromothymol blue on 8th day when there is an like when the ph was nearing or going to 7 the color of the indicator changed to purple 
So when you see the color of the indicator, if it is purple in color, you don't have to buy the fish because your uh, fish is already spoiled because the TVBN and the TMAN concentration has increased. As a result of that, the pH value has gone high. So accordingly, uh, the color of the indicator has been changed. Uh, this is another fish, Barracuda. Uh, in that, uh, like the Barracuda fish, uh, the fish steaks were stored in two different kind of packaging materials. So the first material was an EV oil. It is a multi-laminated uh, plastic material. And uh, Kaitosan with the, the second material was Kaitosan with the ginger essential oil. It is an antimicrobial film. So the first batch of fishes were stored in a synthetic plastic material. And the second batch was packed in a natural antimicrobial packaging material. And then they were attached with the freshness indicator, the bromocrisol purple indicator. So then uh, we noticed the changes in the color of the freshness indicators. And we could see that on eighth day, uh, the color of the indicator changed to purple when we packed the fish in a synthetic plastic film. But uh, the color of the indicator changed to purple only on 20th day when it was packed in, a anti, in an antimicrobial film. So the antimicrobial film extended the shelf life of the fish to 20 days, means uh, uh, compared to 8 days in uh, synthetic plastic material. So the shelf life of the uh, fish was extended and that was indicated by the indicator. So then there are some natural pH indicators like uh, there are anthocyanins, uh, plant anthocyanins. You can extract anthocyanin from different plant parts. So we have extracted anthocyanin from uh, blue pea, the butterfly pea, and then we have extracted the anthocyanin. And then uh, this can, you know, this can act as a freshness indicating uh, freshness indicator because it changes its uh, color from pink to green when the when there is a change in the pH from two to ten. So we have prepared an indicator from uh, blue pea and uh, from many other uh, sources also. Then now we have a, an indicator. Um, then uh, this indicator can be attached to the ice box, which is used for storing fish. So this is assembly. So when you look at the indicator, you can, uh, you, you will know the quality of the fish. Then there are time temperature indicators. These are also small tags or labels. They'll keep track of the time temperature history. Because uh, if you are planning to store your product uh, under chill storage or frozen storage, so uh, there should not be any temperature abuse. So the frozen product, uh, it should be stored at uh, like uh, less than minus 18 degrees Celsius or below that. So if there is a temperature abuse, the time temperature indicator can tell you. So you can look at the picture. So on Boo, this is a time temperature indicator label. So it has got an outer and inner heart. So the color of the inner heart is... Uh, uh, blue and if there is a uh, like change in the temperature the color of the blue inner heart will change to white so then um, there are radio frequency identification tags so this is electronic information based form of indian packaging so we can use uh, rfid tags you can fix it to assets uh, to transmit accurate real-time information to a user's information system so this will help in traceability so but the implementation is largely hypothetical so actually, some people use indelian packaging as uh, synonymous to smart packaging. But uh, like ideally, when you use both the systems uh, together in a package, both active and indelian packaging together, then only we can call it a smart packaging system. Uh, coming to nanotechnology, there are some nanotechnological interventions in the area of packaging. Uh, there are some uh, food packaging applications for nanotechnology. There are nano composites. So the nano materials can be incorporated into the packaging to improve its physical performance, barrier property, biodegradation, etc. There are nano coatings. So the nano material can be uh, coated onto the packaging surface, either inside or outside. That will also improve the barrier property of the packaging material. There are surface biocides. So then uh, active packaging, indelian packaging, so like there are nano sensors, there are uh, nano um, antimicrobial materials. So in the nano composites, uh, it contains, it's a composite material. It has two or more phases. So the continuous phase is the polymer and the displaced phase the filler or the reinforcing material. So the filler is of a nanoscale dimension. So a nanoparticle can be used as a filler or reinforcing material in the polymer. So uh, we reinforce the polymer uh, with nanomaterials in a very small quantity, like less than 5% uh, by weight. 
then um, I, like the concept was developed in the late 1980s and it was firstly commercial by, commercialized by toyota so these are some of the uh, nano fillers uh, there are organic and the inorganic nano fillers clay is an organic nano filler the example is mon morillonite uh, there are some natural biopolymers like nano kitosan nano cellulose the natural antimicrobial agents like nano niacin so these are organic nano fillers so you can uh, use these fillers uh, in polymers then there are inorganic uh, nano fillers like metals <coughs> silver copper gold etc so silver and all uh, the silver nano particle it is antibacterial so then metal oxides like zinc oxide a nano titanium oxide magnesium oxide so these are some of the metal oxides so these are inorganic fillers which are commonly used in the uh, packaging materials so clay is the most common nano filler which is used in the bio nano composite materials for food packaging applications so clay occurs naturally it is abundant it's um, like widely available it's a cost effective material so the most extensively used clay is mon morillonite mmt because of the high surface area and aspect ratio and the most common type of metal studied is silver so because silver has got antimicrobial property and also uh, it is very stable and it has got a low volatility at high temperature and the most common type of metal oxide is zinc oxide because of the deodorizing and antibacterial properties and there are cellulose nanofibers carbon nanotubes silica nanoparticles kitosan nanoparticles and starch nanocrystals so uh, basically the nano composite um, the most important improvement which uh, they bring to the polymer is they can improve the barrier property they can enhance the barrier property of the uh, especially the biomaterials so the most uh, but uh, many people uh, they are unable to explain how nano composite or the nano material how they improve the barrier property of nano composites the widely accepted theory is by nielsen so what he says is Uh, fillers are uh, impermeable or less permeable to gases and water vapor than polymer matrices because uh, when you like uh, when there is no nano fillers the uh, the diffusion path is straight you can look at the picture on the left side um, bottom so like when there is no in the pristine polymer or in the pure polymer the diffusion path is straight so it act as a weak barrier to oxygen or water vapor so if oxygen or any gas wants to pass through the polymer or the packaging material the diffusion path is straight they can simply pass through so it is a weak barrier so but when you introduce the nano fillers into the packaging material so the path become a tortuous path the diffusion path is tortuous so it has to travel a longer path to diffuse or pass through the film so in that way they improve the barrier property of the packaging material but there are some concerns uh, about nano materials uh, because of uh, possible migration into the food means it may come out from the packaging material into food and there is a lack of tools to use uh, to estimate its exposure and we don't have a proper understanding on how to evaluate the potential hazard of nano materials by the food route and people are also concerned about the environmental impact after disposal of the packaging and the fade during recovery and recycling to make new packaging materials and the because of the high surface area and active surface chemistry some nano materials could give rise to unwanted chemical reactions so these are some of the concerns about nano materials when we use it in packaging materials but the public perception uh, they have nanophobia but they what they think is the nano technology derived packaging materials uh, they are perceived more beneficial than the nano technology engineered food because when you incorporate nano materials into the food Uh, it is less acceptable so nanotechnology inside the food is less acceptable than nanotechnology outside the food so when you use uh, the nano materials in food packaging they are perceived uh, like better than the uh, nano incorporated food uh, another uh, uh, packaging another advanced packaging technique is retort pouch packaging so so there is nowadays there is an increased demand for convenient or ready to eat food products so these are uh, the retort pouches are flexible plastic pouches generally they have three or four layers so they have an outer polyester layer um it has got printability then a middle aluminum layer aluminum is a good barrier to oxygen and there is an inner polypropylene layer so these are laminated together with a thermal uh, stable adhesive 
and uh, they are made with plastic that have the ability to resist heat so they are suitable for processing in retorts at a temperature of approximately 121 degrees celsius so food which is uh, fully cooked or partially cooked they spanned in retort pouches and then they are sealed and subjected to sterilization after the food is sealed using a um, container we are hermetically sealing and then it is getting retorted so retort means a pressure pressure vessel uh, which is normally used for commercializing sterilizing food so without any preservatives or refrigeration your food will get a shelf life of one and a half two years 18 to 24 months so you can store your products at room temperature so you don't have to refrigerate it or you don't have to add any preservative so without any preservative you can keep your food you can store your food at normal room temperature up to two years uh, then there are uh, other techniques like aseptic packaging. Aseptic packaging in um, retort pouch packaging, you are packing your food and then uh, you are uh, along with the food, uh, the packet and the food both are getting sterilized together. So you are sterilizing the food and packet together. But in aseptic packaging, you are filling the packet and then uh, means first you are sterilizing the container and then uh, you are uh, sterilizing the food. Then uh, you are uh, filling the product with the commercially sterilized food product and sealing it in a sterile environment. So you are uh, sterilizing the food and packet separately. And then you are filling the uh, content, filling the food inside the packet in an aseptic condition. So then uh, there are blister packaging. So in that the product is placed in cavities or pockets uh, which are deep or shallow. So that, that can resemble the shape of the product. So it's a type of a packaging material made from thermoform plastic tray combined with a flexible film. Then a portion packaging. So there's a type of container which is used for coat filling and pasteurization. So they are made of either lacquered or laminated interiors and they can facilitate food filling at high temperatures. Then a shrink packaging, shrink wrap or shrink film. It's a material made from plastic film. So when heat is applied, the film will shrink tightly over the product it covers. Then skin packaging, so it's a packaging where the product is packed, um, like the product is placed on a piece of paper board or tray and then there is a thin sheet of plastic which is kept over it. Then stretch packaging, it is another plastic film which can be tightly wrapped around the food which can provide extended coverage. It is commonly used for tray packaging. Then there are many environmentally friendly, environment friendly packaging materials. So eco-friendly packaging materials. So everyone knows about the problems of using plastic polymers. Uh, currently, plastic polymers are extensively used in food packaging because of their uh, many merits, like they are easily available, the ease of manufacturing, the cost. The, there are many merits, many uh, like uh, advantages when you use plastic polymers for packaging. And we can't avoid using plastic, but only only thing what we can do is we can limit the use of plastic materials for packing food, like for short term applications like food packaging. So they are these um, petrochemical polymers. So the plastics are not biodegradable. So they can lead to many environmental concerns. They can cause pollution. So they create a lot of waste in the ecosystem. So there are many bio poly bioplastics like bio based polymers, biodegradable plastic, also biodegradable plastic and bio nano composites. So biodegradable plastic means the ASTM definition is plastic which are capable of undergoing decomposition by bacteria, fungi, algae and other natural microorganisms leading to the complete destruction of the plastic. So the bio based polymers and biodegradable polymers are not same. So bio-based polymers means their origin is uh, like uh, from a natural origin. Biodegradable can be a natural or a synthetic polymer. Only thing is it is biodegradable. So there are many bio-based and biodegradable packaging materials like gelatin, agar-agar, carrageenan, sodium alginate. So agar, carrageenan and sodium alginate are derived from, uh, they are mostly sourced from seaweeds. Uh, the seaweeds or the marine microalgae. Then cellulose uh, from plants, then polylactic acid again from plants. So the uh, new materials like corn plastic or the uh, polylactic acid, then bamboo. Then there are many plant fibers like banana fiber, bamboo, then uh, wood fibers, then mycelium. Mycelium is a part of the mushroom. These are also used as packaging materials. So then um, last thing is recycled packaging materials. So earlier uh, recycled plastics were not allowed for uh, packing food. 
but recently the uh, order has been the guideline has been amended uh, by the petroleum ministry and i think later the fssa has also been corrected their uh, they have cor um, like corrected their guidelines so now recycle there are some conditions but recycled materials can also be used for packing food thank you thank you all